Making sense of it all, understanding currency symbols. Hello, language learners. Today we're going to be talking about something that's a key part of our daily lives. Money. More specifically, we'll delve into the world of currency symbols. They are those small signs you see before or after a number, which indicate the type of money being referred to. Understanding them is vital, not only for when you're shopping, but also for reading news, understanding global economics, and even for travel. So, let's dive in. Currency symbols are specific graphical signs used as a shorthand for a currency's name. They are often related to the name of the currency or the country, or economic union, it belongs to. For instance, dollar is the symbol for the US dollar, and euro is the symbol for the euro. It's important to know that while some symbols are used worldwide, others are specific to certain countries. Also, not all currencies have symbols, some use the first few letters of their name or abbreviation instead. Let's now have a look at some common currency symbols and their corresponding countries. Dollar. Primarily associated with the United States dollar, USD, but also used by other countries like Canada, CAD, Australia, AUD, and more. Euro. This is the symbol for the Euro, Euro, used by countries in the European Union. Pound. Represents the British pound sterling, GBP, used in the United Kingdom. This symbol is used for both the Japanese yen, JPY, and the Chinese yuan, CNY. Rupee. Represents the Indian rupee, INR. Currency symbols are used in sentences before the amount, with no space between the symbol and the number. For example, the new phone costs $500. I exchanged my dollars for 200 euros. She bought the vintage book for 30 pounds. While currency symbols are great for quick and easy understanding, sometimes they aren't enough. That's when currency codes, like USD or EUR, come in handy. They are standardized three-letter codes that uniquely identify a currency, following the ISO 4217 standard. These codes are used in banking, business, and travel, especially when dealing with currencies that don't have a widely recognized symbol. For instance, the Swiss francs code is CHF, and the Russian rubles is RUB. And there you have it, a basic understanding of currency symbols. We hope you're feeling a little richer in knowledge after this lesson. Remember, understanding these symbols can be crucial for many real-life situations, from checking price tags when shopping to reading financial news. Keep practicing, keep learning, and we'll see you in our next lesson on payment methods. Happy learning!